Hi there, my name is David Levering. I am the campus director here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History and welcome to A New Way to Museum. Today I'm going to be talking with you about how to identify fossils as well as how to tell some common misidentified non-fossils and be able to tell how we know those are not actually fossils. Some of these objects over the course of this video we're going to actually go and look at under magnification so that you can get a better idea of the kinds of features that you should be looking for if you're trying to decide whether or not something that you find is or is not a piece of fossil, be it petrified wood, bone, a tooth, or anything else. So our first non-fossil item that we're going to talk about is gypsum. And the reason I have this here is it's got kind of a very angular look to it. Um, sometimes it comes in very long chunks and I frequently will have students bring chunks of gypsum up to me because they think that it's bone or a piece of a shell of like a clam and that's completely understandable and we're going to talk about why. So if you look at the side of this piece of gypsum you'll see these little lines going up and down like what we call like striations and you see, we'll see later, very similar structures in our clamshells. You see little lines like that also sometimes in um, fossilized teeth. So it's very understandable why those lines might be thought of as a clue that it's a fossil. But this is also very shiny with all these lines on it. And it's very angular. And I, we don't really expect to find things that are shaped like this as fossil material that have these same kind of visual qualities. So this is very much not a piece of a fossil. It's what we would call uh, an evaporite mineral. The next one is called, uh, it's called manganese oxide. It basically looks like little bits of leaves and sticks that we see here on this flat piece of rock. And frequently people will think that it's lichen, fossilized plants, things like that, and again, very understandable. They tend to form with like a single straight line with lots of little branching patterns coming off of it. What this in fact is, is just a particular um, mineral or a compound called manganese oxide that when it crystallizes forms these very leaf-like patterns and they usually form between layers of rock. Now we're getting to some good stuff. So this is a piece of agate. You can see here, nice and colorful. This is a cut and polished side that you've probably seen things like this in rock and uh, gem stores. If you find it outside, it's gonna look more like this. You're gonna see a little bit of color. It's gonna look really rough and kind of jagged with some smooth sections also. Now, I've had myself as well as students mistake agate for fossil bone and fossil tooth material plenty of times. One of the reasons agate can be tricky is fossilized teeth and fossilized bones are kind of made of the same stuff. So teeth and bone gets replaced by basically quartz or agate. The same, it's the same stuff really. One's a crystal, one's not. And so when it weathers and breaks, and what uh, comes out of the ground, they can actually look very similar. A big difference though that I would notice if I was looking at this, one, you've got these colored layers that don't in any way look like tree rings or the inside of a bone in any way. Um, you also have areas that are very shiny and they look like crystal faces. They look like pointy crystals. And so for me, that's a big sign that this is not a piece of fossil bone, but I'd probably have to look at it for a little bit longer depending on the overall shape of it. So this right here, I would fully understand if somebody found this and they thought that they had found a fossil egg. And we're going to see a fossil egg later on in this video and we're going to come back and talk about this a tiny bit more. So it's very round and it is white, which is characteristics we associate with eggs. This is also very, very hard and it has lines running through it right here. It's also somewhat translucent. Like if I hold this up to a light, I can see the light through it a little bit. 
I would not ex expect to see anything like that for a fossil egg. This is a piece of quartz that has been weathered down to being round. So again, easy mistake to make, but a fossil egg, um, you, you would be, if I were to rub like my car keys on this, it would leave a metal streak because this is harder than the metal your keys are made out, for example. A fossil egg would not do that. They're softer than the metal that your keys are made out of. All right, so another not an egg. It's big, it's round. So it's understandable why somebody might think that this is an egg based on that. This is a piece of rock called gneiss, G-N-E-I-S-S, -S, gneiss. And it is a metamorphic rock, so formed under, way deep underground under heat and pressure. This one was just popped up probably from uh, some mountains somewhere. Um, and what we see here is that it's just been weathered into a round, smooth form. So again, this is very heavy and very hard. Um, and I'm not seeing any of the kinds of structures that I would look for um, in any kind of fossil. So for a fossil, I would expect to see um, something that looks a little bit porous. Um, for an egg, I would, want, I would be looking for something that looks like some shell maybe broken along the edges so that I can see there's the inside of the fossil egg and that's the actual fossilized shell on the outside. And with this, I'm just not seeing anything that looks like that. There's a little bit of the surface material, um, but it looks pretty clearly like just other minerals that have stuck to it when it was in a river or something like that. This is what we would call a concretion. So this, is, this was metamorphic, formed deep underground. This is formed by basically um, mud sticking together and becoming hard over time. And this, I could see somebody mistaking for an egg, for a piece of bone. It's got that kind of weird, long, elongate shape. It's got a little bump on it. In this case, we've got some little broken surfaces right here. And I'm not seeing anything in there that looks like a layer of bone or a layer of eggshell. And I'm not seeing anything that looks like fossil bone or wood tissue. I'm not seeing anything that looks like that structure that we want from the inside of that um, piece of fossil material. So again, these things sometimes take a little bit looking at them to, to determine whether they are or not. But this is one where I would feel very safe even in the field saying that it's not a fossil because of the fact that I can't see anything that looks like fossil tissue, bone, like that, um, on these broken surfaces especially. Now these I know we see frequently here in Kansas because not exactly like this but, but ones that are similar. So these, we have a whole bunch of them right here. These are iron nodules. It's basically a lump of metal that forms um, in the earth. And when they weather out, um, they're quite heavy and quite round. And again, understandable that somebody would mistake these for a small egg just because of the shape. And you found them outside coming out of a piece of rock. And you're like, oh, fe rock fossils come out of the hillsides. Um, and this is very round. So that makes sense. These are, quite, again, quite heavy, and they don't have that texture that we would be looking for showing any cracks or any signs of being squished. Um, it looks basically like a sp almost rusty metal marble. Um, so this would be something that could be pretty easy to um, fool someone. It's got a little bit of like kind of bumpy texture to it, which I might be looking for if I found a fossil bone. Um, but the overall features of it, the fact that it's so heavy, um, the fact that it's not really showing, again, any of that tissue structure, um, like the inside of a bone or a cracked egg, would indicate to me that it's not a piece of fossil material. All right, so we just talked about a lot of not eggs. Now we have a fossil egg right here. This one is a fossil egg. And what I'm seeing here is very clear eggshell. This has been compressed underground 
in the process of it being fossilized. And you can actually see, as it was compressed, you can see the edge of the eggshell very clearly. It also has a very uh, consistent kind of rough texture. Um, and it's pretty symmetrical. So this one, for example, round and bumpy, but it's not kind of the same shape on each side. It's kind of a little bit offset. This one, even though it got squished, very egg-like and basically the same shape on each side. So this, egg, whole egg fossils are pretty uncommon, so I would probably want to give this a good long look and probably talk to some experts before I made a decision, just to make sure. Uh, but this is showing a lot of characteristics that would make me think that it is something like a fossil egg if I found it outside. Okay. So this guy right here we find, and this can be a little bit tricky, just because it looks so much like our agate. And there's a good reason for that. This is a piece of petrified wood. And you can see a bunch of concentric lines, rings on the inside of it, on this polished side. If you flip it over though, it doesn't look too dissimilar from some of the kind of smoother portions of our agate. So what I'm looking for here is that kind of woody texture on the sides. It actually looks like the side of a branch and those rings. Even on this rough side that's not polished, you can see these circles running into each other. Um, and they're separated with some texture. It's not just like on our agate where it's kind of weird bands of color that are not really separated from each other. These are clearly on this side um, different, different rings like we would expect to see in a tree. Here's a common one that we find in our chalks here in Kansas. So this is a fossil clam with a bunch of other little shelled creatures stuck to it on the uh, backside. And we find these all the time here in western Kansas, um, out in our chalks and whatnot. When I am working with students and kind of teaching them how to ID fossils, the big thing I'm looking for to show them how to identify clamshell is the cross section. So you see this broken surface right here? You're looking for these little lines, very much like our gypsum that we saw at the beginning. But the gypsum is shiny. It's very, very shiny and, and reflective. The clamshell is not. The clamshell has all these lines, but it is not shiny at all. It's a good way to distinguish between the two of them. All right. Now this is absolutely a piece of fossil bone. This is actually a piece of a horse leg. Um, and when I'm looking at this, one, the shape of it is very clearly some kind of bone. Like you've got a little muscle attachment here. You've got where um, there would have been, it looks like it's broken off at some point, um, the head that would have been kind of an articular surface where it would have moved around up here. Um, this looks very much like a piece, a piece of a bone like you would find in some kind of modern animal. If we didn't have all of these other structures, let's say we just had like this end right here, we didn't have all this other helpful stuff. What I'm looking for is the cross section, this area right here. And what I'm seeing is a layer of pretty solid bone right there. But then on the inside, you're getting all of this bone that when it was alive probably had things like veins and other things moving through it. And there's lots of holes. It's very porous. And so that's a good way to tell you have a piece of bone versus some of these other non-fossils that we've talked about today. But there's really nice smooth looking structure on the outside, outside of the bone, and then all this porous material on the inside. And this was one of the first characteristics I learned when I started doing field paleontology um, when I was much, much younger. Um, and it's proven to be consistently pretty helpful, whether it's a mammal um, or other like little reptile things and, and whatnot. So that's a good characteristic to look for. Here we have some fish. Actually, we have two pieces of fish. Lots of fish bone here in Kansas too. This has got lots of little lines running through it. 
And again, it looks like it has some kind of living structure. Um, what I'm looking for with fishbone is especially these kind of round shapes and all of these very small little flaky lines running through it. That's usually the first thing I look for where it's like, okay, this is, sh this is not shaped like some rock. It's clearly fossil something. Is it a reptile or a fish? If I see it's really flaky, flaky looking, not kind of nice and smooth, probably a piece of fish bone. This one's also really nice because you get some teeth in it. We'll talk about more about teeth in just a second. So these right here, got a couple of them, are fossil shark teeth. Now once you have some idea of what you're looking for, these are a little easier to distinguish on their own, but they have some characteristics in common with our agate. See here our polished agate has some very smooth, shiny portions. So do our shark's teeth. So things like agate can be kind of tricky sometimes. If it's broken in like a triangle, it can look vaguely like a shark's tooth. What I'm looking for here is the base of the tooth, right here, where it would attach to the mouth, attached to the, the jaw, and these serrations along the edge. You're not going to really find anything like that on a piece of, of broken agate, and those are really good identifiers. Um, and then we have our very big shark tooth. So even though this is a very large megalodon tooth, you're seeing a lot of the same characteristics. It, the coloration is also different, but you have this kind of coarse portion right here where it's very rough, where it would have actually attached up in the mouth, serrations along the edge, as well as like a very clearly kind of a tooth shape. Um, it's also very shiny down on this lower portion that would have been doing, uh, actually doing the biting. So lastly, we have our Mosasaur skull right here. And this has a lovely combination of features that we've talked about on all these other specimens. So we have our teeth right here, and we're seeing these very shiny outer surfaces, as well as kind of these, a little bit of an edge on the front and the back of the tooth. We're also seeing our bone that has, is pretty smooth, but if you look at it closely, you're gonna see um, little, little holes, little pores, things that look like when it was alive, it would have things like veins and nerves and stuff like that actually moving, um, traveling through that bone tissue. If you were to get a good uh, cross section, which I don't know that we have just because of the way this one's set, you would be able to kind of see inside of it and possibly get a look at those inner fossilized inner tissues of the bone. Um, but if you also found something like this, and it was very clearly teeth set in this kind of smooth, um, narrow structure, then you could be pretty confident that one, you found something with teeth, so it's an animal, and that it's likely set in the jawbone itself. Thank you for joining us today for a new way to museum. I hope that you had a wonderful time and that you learned some new things and that you'll join us again soon. Thanks for joining us in A New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.